Hey everybody, let's look at something that has confused algebra students for many decades, if not centuries. But uh, I'll try to make it a, a little easier to understand by making it kind of practical. They never did this when I was in high school, back in the early 18th century. But anyway, um, that is a typical graph, y equals 2x plus 1. Now we have done this before, we've simply just placed in like points, right? In other words, we stuck in some value for x, and then we saw what we got for y. And the way I explain this, um, let's pretend this is our uh, explanation in here of y equals 2x plus 1. Let's say you get offered a job babysitting a bunch of homeschooled brat or uh, children, um, and they say, we're just going to give you a dollar to show up at the church. There's a room we're going to sling it, or we're going to uh, place the children in. Okay, we'll give you a dollar just to show up. Even if no kids ever show up, you're going to be there an hour. If not a single kid shows up, you get a buck just for being willing to do it. Okay, but we will also pay you per kid that shows up two dollars. Okay, now the question is, how much money are you going to make? Tell me, what's the, what's the answer? How much money are you going to make? Obviously, the answer is, well, it depends on the number of kids I have. You know, if this, you know, if I have zero kids, then I get $2 times zero, but I get $1, so I get $1. But if, let's say, five kids show up, I get two times five, that's uh, $10, plus $11, okay? That's what this is all about. This is not some random thing. Now, again, if you wanted to put it this way, here's the old way of doing it. Oh, zero kids show up, okay? That means the X is zero, okay? So I get two times zero, but I get a buck. There's a point, right? Zero, one is the point. So uh, zero over and one up. There is, boom. Oops, I always do that. There's a nice point, okay? Well, let's say three kids show up. Yay, that means I make $2 a kid, three kids, $6 plus one, $7, right? So if one, two, three kids show up, I make $7 right there, all right? Let's say, I don't know, four kids show up. I get four times two dollars. Oh, let me see. Eight dollars plus one. Oh, nine dollars a kid. Awesome. So one, two, three, four dollars. Four kids show up. You get boom, and there you go. That is your line, a perfectly straight one, I might add. Anyway, okay. That's how. That's what a line is. And that's all you're doing. You're plopping in some stuff for x. You're getting an answer for y, and that's it. That's all you're doing. Okay. Now, uh, a couple of things you should know about this equation of a line. We'll talk about that in a second, but graph, remember how to graph this, x equals 4. Well, that means that every single, in other words, this is your x-axis, this is your y-axis, all right? Every single time your x is equal to 4. Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's where the x equals 4, so if every single time x is 4, that's what your line's going to look like if it were a little straighter, all right? If your look, uh, line looks like this, y equals negative 2, then that means x, and there's your y, then that means your y value is down here at negative 2, and the entire line looks like this. The whole thing is negative 2. All right. Those don't come up a whole lot of times um, in examples like we did with a babysitting. It was just helpful to know. Okay. You should know this. Make sure you have this in a nice, beautiful little card with, you know, in, in your notes or whatever, you really want to make sure you understand this, okay? Because this will tell you the entire shebang about uh, lines and everything everything about them. It'll make it so much easier for you in the future, okay? That is the general equation of a line. Y equals mx plus b is what they call it. Now, look back. I'll come back in a second. There's an example. Y equals 2x plus 1. Y equals something x plus something, all right? Don't worry don't about the y's and x's. You're worried about the m and the b. You want to figure out what those are, okay? The m, I'll tell you, is the slope. The slope, all right? The b is the y-intercept, all right? And I'll tell you about both of those in a second, all right? The y-intercept will be, well, let's, let's look at slope first, okay? Let's say you have, um, I mean, slopes are fractions, basically. And if they're not fractions, you can turn them into fractions. Like, right, let's say if somebody, oh, my slope is two. Okay, well that means, you know, I don't know, I'll just pull, I'll just pull some random point here. If my slope is two, you have to make that into a fraction, okay? What you do, they call this the rise over the run. 
And that's just a fancy way of saying, you know, how far up and down that goes and how far left and right that goes. In fact, we can go back if you want to. Look at this slope. If you want to think of it this way, make yourself a fraction that looks like this. That is slope. If that helps you to write that down, again, that's called rise over run. That is the slope. Every slope is a fraction. That is a fraction. If you just see an integer like 3 or negative 5, that is still a fraction. Okay? And don't, <clears throat> don't worry too much about... When I was your age, I worried about, oh wait, does it go right or... Oh, is this going up or down? Or is this going left or... Oh, I have to... And the teacher would say, now if it's a negative, you take with the opposite of the... I'm just... All of that stuff. All you need to do is worry about this. In our example back here, um, where the slope is 2... Okay, that's the slope is 2. All right, you see that number? All right. Okay, if you have a slope of 2, you know that this, uh, we saw the graph a minute ago. This graph is going like this, right? It's going this way, okay? You can also have lines that are kind of like bad. You know, if you're a, a business and the boss goes, oh, no, these are our sales the last five years, you'd be like, oh, okay, I need to start looking for a new job because we're, this is terrible, okay? This, however, uh, is a positive 2, we'll just say. And so, which means you will have a slope going like this. Your line will be doing this, all right? Anytime you see it, it's two of a slope. You look at it and you go, is it a positive or a negative? Okay, it's positive, so it's going this way. Don't worry about which way to go on top, up or down, or which way to go left or right on the bottom. Pick one and then adjust the other one. In other words, let's say the two, I just, let's say I start with this one, and I'll explain how to do this later. Your slope will be up two. So you can go up two or you can start here and go down two. Doesn't matter. All you want to make sure it's happening though is that you look at this, you go, my line is going up. You make sure whatever you do to make sure when you connect those two dots, that line is going up and to the right. All right. So let's say you went up two on this one and you looked at the bottom and you went, okay, that's a one. So I go up two. Should you go left one? Or should you go right one to make sure that the line is pointing up to the right? You go up two, and then you go left or right? Right. Okay, so there you go. You connect those and go like that, okay? But let's say you started here. Instead, you went, okay, I can go rise, I can go up or down. I'm just going to go down. One, two, okay? Well, then where should you go next for the run, which is a one, left or right? If you go like this, down two, and then over one, and you connect those dots, It'll look like like one of these terrible graphs, okay? But since that's a positive two, you'll go down two, and then you'll go this way, okay? If you notice, all these dots will connect if you do it correctly. All right, there you go. Okay, that's a slope example, okay? Let's do one more. Uh, let's say, for the heck of it, we said negative, I don't know, three-fourths. That can be a slope, all right? In other words, you'll see something like y equals negative three-fourths x plus five or whatever. Okay. So we'd start, and we'd just say, okay, I'm going to start right there. There's a point, and I'll explain that in a second. Well, my slope is negative, which means my line will be pointing like this. It'll be going like that, okay? So don't forget, you, and you, now you can just ignore the negative and work on this. The 3 is going up or down. The 4 means you go left or right. Let's just say this time I'm going to go down 3. 1, 2, 3. Now, should I go right 4? Or should I go left four from here to make sure my line points down? I should go right four. One, two, three, four. And there's my line. Oops. I'm just going to go. Let me come over here. There you go. And it will point, be pointing down. Let's just say, for example, you decided not to do that. This is the line you started with. You went, no, I'm going to go up three. Okay. I, you decided to go up three. I went down three. Whatever. Okay. I go one, two, three up. Now, should I go left 4 or should I go right 4 to make sure my line points down? I should go left, right? 1, 2, 3, 4. Now that, that, that's okay. So you notice that all three of these points connect really good. As long as you make it really nice and big, they'll connect. There we go. Okay. I'm a gifted artist. Okay. There's slope examples, all right? Here's some y-intercept examples, all right? Let's just say here's a line. y equals... 2x plus uh, 3, all right? Don't forget what this means, babysitting numbers, right? How much how many, how many mon money do you get by just showing up? $3, right? How much do you get for each kid? $2, right? Okay, well, 
This is a y-intercept. The y-intercept, don't forget, this is the y-axis. That is where the line crosses the y-axis. It can be going like this, could be up here, could be here, could be down, could be anywhere, but it crosses it, okay? This is your y-intercept. That tells you exactly where that line will cross the y-axis. In other words, if you had zero kids show up, you'd make $3, right? Because zero kids times two is zero plus three. So in other words, X is the number of kids. Oh, no, zero kids show up. So I go over none, but I go one, two, three, and there is my Y-intercept. In fact, you can look at an equation of a line from now on, and you can start immediately going and putting the dot for your Y-intercept. Anytime you see this, that means the Y-intercept is three. If you see this, Y equals, um, I don't know, negative uh, one half X minus five. Well, you, uh, look, you can look at this and go, aha, one, two, three, four, five. That's where my y-intercept is, right there. And you can pill around with the rest of it later. In fact, you know what, let's do it. Let's do this one first, all right? This is a good situation for you. Three bucks to show up, two bucks per kid. All right, let's say, uh, oh, you know what? Here's a slope, right? That's gonna be two over one, right? Okay, so we'll start right here at the y-intercept, start at your three, whatever that number is, and go, okay, I'll go up or down two, and then I'll go left to right one. Let's just say I go up or down one, two. Okay, now that's a plus two x, that's a good, it'll be pointing up and to the right. If I do that, I go one, two, up, and then the bottom number is a one, which means I'll go over one. All I need to do is make sure that I'm pointing up to the right, and there we go, that is my graph. In other words, somebody can ask you later, oh, let's see, what if I babysat 10 kids, right? Oh, if I'm gonna go up here and find out how much money I'd make, and if you had a big enough graph, you would be able to figure it out, okay? The second one, a little different color here on this one, all right? Here's the second one, okay? This is a terrible situation for you babysitting-wise, okay? Because the lady goes up to you and says, okay, I want you to pay me $5 for the privilege of uh, renting this room. So you go immediately, ugh, one, two, three, four, five. If no kids show up at all, I lose $5. There we go. What's even worse is you should just quit and like run, flee the vicinity, scream, screaming out of the room. Because this is what you get for every kid. Not only do you not get anything for babysitting any kid, you have to pay them a half a dollar for babysitting every kid. So the more kids that come, the, the more money you owe, never take the job. Okay, so anyway, your slope will be negative one over two. Now don't forget, you know, the one over two means I'm going up or down here, and I'm going left or right here. And all you need to make sure you, you do is, in other words, here's your, you know, y-intercept. You need to make sure this line points down and to the right. So don't worry about whether you go, oh, should I go up or down with the one? Choose one, doesn't matter, just go down, who cares, all right? Now, on, on the two, should you go left to or right to to make sure the line points? In other words, that's a negative, which means the line points down, okay? I'm gonna take, go right, start from the negative five, that's what you always do. Once you find out the y-intercept, you plot it, then you go, okay, what's my uh, slope? All right, it's a one on top, I'm just gonna go down one, okay? Then you've gotta tell yourself, okay, to make sure that this thing points down to the right, should I go left, one, two? That'd be wrong, wouldn't it? Because then I connected that and I go like that, okay? So I go down one, and then I go one, two to the right over this way. So when I connect the two points, the line goes bad. Right? Negative right there means bad, okay? Okay, let's look at this. We have done, again, we've done this before. Look at your graph, uh, look, go ahead and look. Y equals one third X minus two. What's that mean for you? How much do they charge you to rent the room as a babysitter? Two dollars, right? Okay, how much do you get per kid though? A third of a dollar, right? Okay, so the old way of doing this is where we went, okay, well, I'm just gonna plot points, okay? So zero is the easiest thing to figure out every single time. I, that's the first point I would ever do. If zero, uh, Number of kids you get zero, you, you're gonna end up owing them $2, right? So there's your X, here's your Y. 
you get zero kids, I mean, there you go. Ugh, okay. All right. The second one, of course, this is there's a three in the denominator, so I'd make sure that I did multiples of three, so I'd do that. Okay, three kids show up. Great. So you make three kids times a third is one dollar, and you subtract two dollars, and then now you end up owing them uh, one dollar, even though three kids actually show up for the thing. So we have three kids show up, so one, two, three kids show up, but you end up owing them a dollar. So bad situation for you. But good news, if six kids show up and you get a third of a dollar per kid, well, I have six times a third, that is six divided by three, which is two. Eight, I need two dollars. And I had to pay two dollars to rent the room, so I get nothing. So after a long, sweaty, diaper-filled, bloody, screaming match of an hour with six kids running around, you're the proud owner of zero dollars. One kid, two, three, four, five, six, and you get zero dollars. But eventually, maybe you had a bunch of kids, you could make more money, okay? All right, that's the first way we've done. The second way, and I hope you're gonna enjoy this way, okay? Look at the equation, all right? All you need to do is figure out two things, all right? Look at that equation, and you're gonna, be able to just go, aha, last number here, that is the y-intercept by definition, that's the b. b stands for y-intercept, that makes a lot of sense, okay. In other words, that's your x, there's your y. Where does this line cut across the y-intercept at negative two? That's where you start, right there. The second thing, remember what the one-third stands for? Slope, right, okay. And again, this is always a fraction, right? That's bad. I did that wrong. Okay, that's the up and down, and this is the left and right. The rise over the run, okay? So in other words, you start at the point where your y-intercept is, right? And you're going to go, you know, up or down, whatever. The question is, is this number a plus or a minus? It's a plus, right? Which means the line will go up like this. So make sure whatever you do with the one and the three, that you connect the dots and the line's going up to the right, okay? So let's just say you went, I'm gonna go down one. I could go up or down one. I'm going to go down one. Now, should you go over to the left three or to the right three? If you go to the right three, if you connect that, that thing's going down to the, okay? But if you go down, you start with the, at the, the wider set, you go down one, and you go one, two, three, that is your connection right there. So there you go, and I completely missed both points. There. I fixed that, okay. Very professional looking there, all right? So eventually the point is this. You should eventually be able to look in your book, once you've done enough, enough of these, and it's Saxon, believe me, you will. And look at this and go, okay, I'm looking at an equation, hmm, let's see. It's a third, oh, it's positive, so it's going up to the right. Oh, the, uh, the y-intercept is negative two, so it's down, okay, it kind of looks like this. You can picture it in your mind, then you just follow up and do it, all right? Here's a couple of just quick follow-ups here. Find the y-intercept of the line whose equation is that, okay? Let's first translate this into babysitter talk, okay? How much do they charge you to use the room in this situation? Five dollars, right? Okay. So how much do you get per kid? Three dollars, right? You have to have at least two kids to make at least a dollar, right? Okay. Find the y-intercept. Well, by definition, that's this, right? So in other words, that's the number of kids, that's how much money you make, right? So if you may have no kids, in other words, you don't go over any at all, one, two, three, four, you know, kind of sad. Zero kids, you, you get charged five dollars, okay? But obviously, this thing will be going up to the right is some, some way, right? Because this is a positive number right there. And the more kids you babysit, in other words, it's good for you in that way. And the more kids you babysit, in other words, as the number gets bigger on the on going that way, the more kids, that means this number goes higher and higher and your money gets more and more. So, okay, let's look at this one. Find the y-intercept of the line shown. Well, there's a line, right? Good situation for you, okay? It's going up to the right. What's the y-intercept? Five, right? I mean, there it is, okay? Thank you. Okay, pretty simple, all right? Find the equation of the line graphed in this figure. Ooh, okay. This, I mean, this, this, what I'm gonna tell you right now, 
is going to get you all the way through high school with graphing lines when you get this horrific question. Because you'll get forms of this question a jillion times through algebra one, two, trigonometry, I mean, even in a college algebra or college math, if you take that. Find the equation of a line, blah, 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 okay? Let me tell you, I'm, this is the secret, you ready? This is what you do. This is the number one step to doing this, and that is this, you write this. Y equals slope X plus Y intercept. You simply write this there. If you write that out, you're halfway done. At least you've got something to build on, okay? You must know and remember that that is the slope and this is the y-intercept, all right? So now all you need to do is figure out what's the y-intercept, and I'll plop it right there, and then what's the slope, and I'll plop it right there. Well, first off, let me ask you a question. Is this slope going to be a positive number or a negative number based on the way this line is pointing. Is this a good business for you? Let's say this is your business, how your sales have been. This is negative, right? This is bad. Okay, so immediately, without even thinking, you can go like this. Y equals negative something, X, and then plus B, okay? Well, if you want, let's just figure out what is the Y-intercept. Look at it. Where does that line cross the Y-axis? Right there, right? That's a three, okay? So just write it, plus three. You got it. We're almost there. Only thing you need to do, since you already have the slope as a negative, is figure out what the fraction is. And you can do that. You can take any two points on this line, anywhere you want. You can start with here and go and, st and make this your second one. You can go to here and go to there. Just make sure the two you, that you pick are right, uh, you know, like right on a corner right on the edge like this one and then like this one and so on. Okay. All right, well, let's write the fraction. Remember, your fraction is this, the rise over the run. So pick, I don't know, why don't we just, we can just pick this point. Okay, here's a point and then here's another point. That's right on there, right? Of course, I could have picked this one and then gone to that one or whatever. Just don't pick one that's like hanging right in the middle there. Ooh, look, oh, look, that's all in the middle. That's all, forget that, okay? The question is, from here to here, how far up or down did you go? And the answer is one, two, three, right? So that is your top number, okay? The other question is, in the same amount from that point to that point, how far did you go? In other words, here's your point you started at, right there. Okay, how far over did you go? And the answer is you went over two because that's, you know, you go over two and you slide down, there it is, okay? So you go over two. That's the number on the bottom. And that is it. Start off writing this, y equals slope x plus y-intercept. Uh, figure out what the y-intercept is, Just plop it in there, boom. Now your hardest part is figuring out what the slope is, okay? We'll take any two points that are not, you could have taken this point and that point. That would have been fine. Because it'll be the same thing. One, two, three, up or down. And then one, two to the right is two. Three over two. And then we know there's gonna be a negative three over two because it's going down to the right. And there you go. That's how you do it. Let's try it again. All right? Same thing, all right? If you want to pause it, I'll give you a hint again. All you need to do is go y equals slope x plus the y-intercept. You need to find that and that. If you want to pause it and give it a whirl yourself, go ahead. Okay, I'm assuming you paused or maybe not. All right, the y-intercept, you tell me. What's the y-intercept? Where does that line cut across the y-axis? Right here, right? That's the point, okay? Well, that is a negative 1, negative 2. So we're halfway there y equals mx minus 2. If you put plus negative 2, that's fine, no big deal, okay? But go ahead and get to a point where you're putting minus 2, all right? Now my question is for you, is this a positive slope or a negative slope based on the way the line is pointing? Positive, right? It's going up to the right, okay? Business, is it that your sales in business, that's positive, okay? So it's a positive, okay? So you don't need to worry too much about that. Now, the only thing is just find any two points that are nice points that actually are right on a line. You could do this one and this one, 
You could do, I did the math, you could do this one way down here and then that one way up there. In fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna prove this to you, watch. Okay, let's just choose the e I, easiest one I choose, okay? So let's first off, don't forget what slope is, it's the, that over that, right? So from here to there, when it goes even with that point, is one, right? So y equals, there's gonna be a one on the top, x minus two, okay? And from, he, from here, going over this way, in other words, how far over do you go? You go two, and there you go, so one half. Now let's pretend like we didn't see that. Let's pretend like I, for some reason, wanted to torture myself, and I wanted to go from here all the way to there. Ugh, okay. All the way from here, and I would stop right there, right? And I'd go from here all the way to there. Ugh, okay. Well, I am at negative five, right? And I go all the way up to one. Well, how far is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, right? Because that's gonna be six on the top. And I go over here to ne from negative six, which is where I am now, if I go up, right? That's negative six, all the way to positive six. Well, how far is it from negative six on a number line to positive six? It's 12, right? Well, six over 12, if you, if you uh, reduce that, you get one half doesn't matter which two points you choose, long as they're nice and on the corner there, right? Oops. Let's say that one and, I don't know, that one or this one and that one or whatever. Doesn't matter. And there you go. Okay. Let's graph this one. Go ahead. You, you do this yourself. Take a piece of graph paper and uh, using what you know about how to figure slope and y-intercept and all that stuff, do it. Don't plot points. Just use the information right there on there the negative three-fifths and the positive two to actually graph it. Now, use the positive two first to get yourself started. So, okay, go ahead and pause it. All right, I know that this is the y-intercept. So it's a positive two, so my line starts out like this. It goes across right there, okay, done. All right, this is my slope, which means this line will be going down and to the right, okay, down. Negative three-fifths, that means I take right from that point. Start at that point always. Don't just start random out here somewhere. Start at that point and go up or down three. I'm just going to go up for the heck of it. One, two, three, up. Okay, now I know that line needs to be pointing down. So should I go to the right five or should I go to the left five? One, two, three. That's the top one. One, two, three. Yes, I should go to the left. One, two, three, four, five. Five to the left. Oops. That is my beautifully, perfectly straight line. Okay. And there you go. That is how to graph that line. So you have graphed a line using not even plotting points. You've just done that with it. That's it. Okay. Let's try one more. This is kind of funky. All right. Let's, let's stay together for a second. Okay. The way this has to look is like this. You have to have the y equals x plus on there, okay, the way it looks right now, okay? So this needs to be rearranged, all right? We're moving the x over here. So my new equation is this, negative two y equals negative x, because I moved it over. If you want to call it negative one x, that's fine, plus four. Now to get this all cleaned up and have a nice positive one y like this has, you know, y here, there's a y there, this has to be divided by negative two, which means this has to be divided by negative two, which means this has to be divided by negative two, okay? So now we have negative two divided by negative two, that's our y, and negative divided by negative is a positive, so one over two, x. Four divided by negative two is negative two, and that is our new equation. So you're gonna have to flip this to where the positive y, one y is on the left, everything else is on the right, and you'll graph it then. Well, you tell me. What does the negative two tell you? It tells us that the y-intercept is right there, right? Okay, is this line going to be pointing like this up or is it going to be pointing down? It'll be pointing up, right? That's a positive number. Okay, so your only job now is to take this and go up or down and take the bottom and go left or right. I'm just going to go up this time. I'm going to go up one. And then to make sure that things, this thing points to the right, I go over to the right two and connect it, and then there we go. Okay, and that's it. That's how you draw an equation of a line, or write an equation of a line. Okay, let's uh, try A and B. Try A and B, and then you know pause it, and then we'll come back. 
Okay, A it shows us that every single time the y value is 1, negative 1, excuse me, negative 2, negative 3, and there you go. So our equation looks like this, y equals negative 3. It's kind of weird. You'll get used to seeing these and doing those, and then it'll come to you really quickly, okay? Uh, B, let's take, if you need to pause it, go ahead and do it again. But first off, let's just, again, this is going to get you through every single kind of line. Oh, draw the equation. Uh, it's just, you've got to start somewhere. This is where you start, right there. Got to write that out. Slope, y-intercept. Fill in the blanks, okay? You tell me in B, what is the y-intercept of B? What number? It is 2, right? There it is. It's right here. We see it. So we can write the slope x plus 2. A quick question for you. Is the m, is the slope, going to be a negative or a positive? It's negative, right? Because it's going down like that, okay? So you can just go ahead and write y equals negative something x plus 2. Now again, you can take any two points you want. This, this one and this one all the way down here if you're a sucker for punishment. You can take this one and go here. That'd probably be the easiest thing since you're already there, okay? Well, let's talk about it. In, from this to this, where you're matching up here, you go down one, right? Down one. The same time, to get over there, you go one, two over. So you'll have negative one over two x plus two. There you go. Okay. Okay. doke. Try C and D. Pause it and then uh, come back. Okay. C tells us it's on. It crosses the x-axis at one, two, three. Every single time the x is equal to 3, so we're just going to say the x is equal to 3. There we go. Okay, D looks a little nicer as far as our babysitting job goes. This is our equation of the line. This is what I would always start doing if I were you for a long time until it becomes really natural to you. Y equals slope x plus the y-intercept. All right? What is the y-intercept according to this drawing? It's 3. So we can just write y equals the slope x plus 3, okay? Is the slope positive or negative this time? Positive, right? It's going to the right, okay? So take any two, you know, points you want that are nice and, ooh, there's one and there's one, okay? Well, I go up 1, which means 1's on the top, and I go over 2, and there it is. And that's the difference between a positive half uh, slope and look at that. You see the difference? That's a negative half slope, positive half slope. Negative, positive. Negative, positive. See the difference? One's going up, same kind of thing. Okay. All right, we'll try one more. Actually, two more. Uh, go ahead and do E, pause it, and use what you know about slope and y intercept to draw no plotting points. Just draw this thing based on your negative two thirds and your positive two. So pause it. All right, your positive 2 tells you that this is the y-intercept. There it is. Ta -da. Okay. The negative tells you that this thing is pointing down. So you stick right on that y-intercept. And you go up 2 or down 2. It doesn't matter. You might have gone down. You know, I'll just go down 2. So down 2. And to make sure that this thing points to the down to the right, because it's negative 2 thirds, 1, 2 down, and then 1, 2, 3, Right there, and oh my, that was horrible. There you go, that's better. And that is your line, there you go, okay. All right, try F. You've got to do some, you know, rearranging here. So if you want to pause it and then come back a second and then pause it again after I tell you how to rearrange it, you can do that too, so I'll do, I'll do that next. All right, pause it. Okay, uh, I had to pause this thing, so. Let's see, 3y, man, this is a mess, equals x, and then I move this thing over, and that's going to be minus 5. And then to get this up, 1y, we have to go by, divide by 3, divide by 3, 5 thirds, what in the world? That's a joke. Anyway, let's try it. y equals, that's going to be a 1 over 3x minus 5 thirds, oh, hooey. What is 5 divided by 3? Okay, let's just finish this out together unless you want to uh, stop. Negative 5 thirds is like 1 and 2 thirds, you know? I mean, you know what? Since it's so, so close to 2, I'll just put it just about on 2, and it's not that big of a deal either. Okay, oops. 
Okay, well, I think I just lost it. Almost negative two, there it is. Okay, uh, well, that is our y-intercept, we got that. Now our slope is one-third. Now that is a positive, which means it's going to go up and to the right, okay? So going up or down, doesn't matter. I mean, again, this is your slope, that over that. So the one, you're up or down. I'll just go down, what the heck. I'm gonna go down one, which means I will go one, two, three to the left because that's the only way I can do that and have both of those numbers down one and then that way, okay? By the way, if I went up one, if you went up one, you would go one, two, three to the right this way. If you notice, of course, all three of those points are gonna, you know, nicely come together just like that, okay? Okay, long lesson, yeah, I know, but make sure you know how to do this and uh, practice them this week. See you next time.